If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 12 of the Barcelona career mode here on FIFA 15. After a very, very entertaining El Clasico in the previous episode, we come into a home game this time against lesser opposition, but still an opposition that could cause us a few problems. Celta Vigo are a decent side, most notably they have uh, one of their best players of the recent times, uh, Nolito, starting in uh, their lineup today. Now, he's actually scored something like 25 to 30 goals over the past two seasons in real life and has been actually heavily linked with Barcelona over the past week or so IRL. So we're going to have to keep our eyes up for him on the left-hand side of their front three. Obviously, he's picked up a couple of Team of the Seasons in Ultimate Team as well over the past couple of years. That's normally a good gauge of someone that's having a decent time in real life. And uh, Fabian Oriana uh, on the right-hand side as well is obviously a player that we're uh, familiar with thanks to uh, our time at Nottingham Forest on uh, Football Manager a little bit earlier on in the year. But Celta Vigo actually started off on the front foot. As you can see here, they had a good shot that was well saved. And then by playing the ball about quite nicely here from the corner, they're actually going to work themselves a goal. And it is that man, Nolito, that gets the goal to give Celta a 1-0 lead after six minutes. Now, I'm not having that. That really pissed me off. I was like, look, you can't just come to the new Camp and pass it around me on the edge of my own box. That's just not on. You can't play Barcelona-style football in front of the Camp Nou away from home and expect to get away with it. So I turned the heat up on them over the next, uh, well, 85 minutes or so. We'll find out how things went for them between now and full time. Our first chance there came through uh, Miralem Pjanic. Rather acrobatic stuff. Completely threw himself into that uh, overhead kick. Unfortunately, uh, couldn't keep it down. Luis Suarez, though, starting up top in this one rather than, obviously, Alexander Lacazette. Luis Suarez will maintain that first team spot as well from here on out. Lionel Messi though hits the post and can't quite get the ball back again before unfortunately giving away a foul. So that's the closest we've come to this point. Acrobatic chance from Pjanic, post from Messi, but Leo's going to be involved again here. Played again down the air outside of their defence, but turns inside on his left foot, this time not to be denied. 1-1 one, one after 31 minutes, we're back on level terms. Half time is not yet upon us before we're going to get another chance. Marco Royce coming down the left hand oh, right hand side, sorry. I'm playing Royce at Cam in this one, as uh, some of you guys recommended. Good shot, well saved, and then Luis Suarez is there though with the rebound. Good technique on the shot as well to keep it down on the swivel to make it Barca 2 at Celta 1 and we have ourselves a lead for the first time in today's episode. Into the second half we go, literally just at the beginning of the half as well, as you can see, 46th minute now. Royce into Rakitic after receiving it from Neymar is going to turn inside the defender really nicely. Good shot, but unfortunately can't quite keep it on target. He uh, tried to do the keeper with the eyes there and just drill it towards the near post. You can see it zip across the surface, but unfortunately not able to find that, uh, that near post with the shot. But from the following goal kick, Jerome Boateng just annihilates Charles up top with the header. Suarez into Marco Royce, then a gorgeous uh, switchback pass to Lionel Messi. Outside the left foot finish, 3-1 Celta, 3-1 Barca, sorry, against Celta. And you have to think that's probably game over from there on out. They hadn't really had a chance after uh, their opening couple. We were really, really dominant here. Neymar's going to turn inside with a nice burb spin. Gets caught, but continues to go on. Then a cheeky little fake Rabona before uh, sending it inside to Marco Royce. Good dribbling feet from him. Works it back to Miralem Pjanic. Skips over the ball as it then finds its way to Luis Suarez. Shot is really well blocked by Cabral, though. We aren't quite able to uh, really put the tie beyond sight of Celta Vigo and make it 4-1 just yet. But uh, Fabian Orian is in the box here. Nice dribbling feet from him to turn inside. Good block by Pique. Time for a counter-attack. Marco Royce has Neymar in so much space on this far side. Coming down the left-hand side. He's got a five-star weak foot, obviously, so we're going to try and hit it with that left. Hits the post, then drops to Suarez. He has the shot, and he hits the post as well. Unfortunately, I think Luis Suarez was offside, or there was some sort of foul in there because, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the play was brought to a claw the the you know the, the play was halted for a free kick to Celta Vigo I made a couple of changes there though as you saw Rakitic going off Rafinha coming on and uh, I can't quite remember who the other change was to be completely honest Nangolan was the guy who came on on the ball here as you can see his bald head uh, involved in the play and uh, Marius not Mario Suarez Luis Suarez makes the turn fires it into the bottom corner makes it 4-1 that's two goals for him in this one four goals for us and that is the game out of sight for Celta Vigo so they started very brightly and caused us a few problems but unfortunately they just just weren't strong enough to hold on and keep their uh, their one goal lead intact. We come, we run away with a rather solid 4-1 victory. So really pleased with that. 
If you're enjoying the episode to this point, then make sure that you hit the like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If we could get over 500 likes again for uh, the Barcelona Crema, that would be fantastic. We come into the Champions League, though. We're into the second half of the Champions League games now, obviously. We've played Olympiacos. Uh, already this season and we've beaten them 2-1 at home so we're hoping for another similar result if we can possibly get it they're starting uh, Mitroglu up top Afli out wide left obviously a former Barcelona player of course now at Stoke in real life but uh, in real life in this particular season he was at Olympiacos anyway so it's still realistic at least for him to be there we're starting though Arda Turan on the, uh, the left-hand side here and Lacazette up top with Alex Vidal on the right. This game came just two or three days after the previous game against Celta Vigo. So I had to play a bit of a rotation side, which isn't that much of a problem. Although, in fairness, my rotation side here at Barcelona isn't as strong as you might expect it to be. Uh, there's definitely some improvement or some growth that can come from uh, the players that we have in this side, like Mark Barcher, Matteo Tichilio, uh, Jose Gaia, etc., there are definitely some players in this team that need to improve. We're going to have a free kick here, though, with Alexander Lacazette after they've taken a 1-0 lead early on again. And he's going to hit the top of the bar, unfortunately. It doesn't quite dip in time to get it inside the uh, the goal net to draw us back level. But into the second half we go now. They were, it was a really tough game, this one, against Olympiacos. I struggled to maintain possession, to be completely honest. Couldn't create many chances. And they're going to get the next chance and the next goal. A beautiful finish from Mitroglu to get his second of the game. That first time left-footed volley was out of this world. It was so good. Now, obviously, you'll notice Mark andre Stegen was in goal for the previous game as well. Uh, unfortunately, Claudio Bravo's picked up an injury that's going to see him out for six weeks. I'm not sure whether I showed you that in the previous episode or not. But uh, he is out for six weeks, just to confirm. So uh, Tostegan's going to get himself some extra first-team football in the next few episodes. But I uh, brought on Luis Suarez for, uh, for Arda Turan in this one and then moved Lacazette wide left put Luis Suarez up top. Could have played through Suarez there, but he just ran offside. So Lacazette's going to go on his own, turn inside, then finesse it into the far bottom corner to make it 2-1 with still half an hour to go. So we're not out of it just yet. We're still firing to get ourselves at least a point here in the group stage if we possibly can. Maybe even a win and turn it round like we did against Celta Vigo as well. Lacazette involved again, coming down the left-hand side. Could have returned it to him here, but it was well marked by the defender. Tracked his run very nicely indeed. Iniesta, though, into Suarez. Gets the turn to Nangolan. Around to Rafinha. Turn inside the defender, but the shot is just too tame not good enough to uh, cause the goalkeeper Roberto any real problems whatsoever they made a change though bringing on Benitez former Troglu who obviously caused me some problems to score both of their goals and to Stegen I really mm, that put me off that really put me off him to be completely honest there came for the corner ended up punching it backwards and out for another corner didn't really fill me with confidence considering he's going to have to be my first team keeper over the next few weeks didn't fill me with confidence here either could have caught that quite comfortably ended up just punching it at the floor but luckily for me it fell to uh, to a teammate and we cleared it but we weren't able to get victory a shock win for Olympiacos at home against Barcelona means that our Champions League qualification hopes are still intact but a little bit less uh, likely or less guaranteed than it was previously I'll show you the Champions League group towards the end of the episode obviously though with a squad report feel free to uh, to have a closer look at any player in particular detail if you would like to like I mentioned in the previous episode um, I'm going to have uh, squad reports uh, you know at the end at the beginning of each month rather than every Monday because we're not necessarily getting through an entire month uh, each week in real life so whenever we reach a new month which we have done in today's episode then uh, I'll show you a squad report and uh, you can catch up on how people are doing Matias Chilio is growing very nicely up three ratings Mark Barcher is up one but there's definitely a lot of improvement that can be made by those rotation players so uh, hopefully they can start to grow between now and the end of the, uh, this particular season otherwise we may need to look to uh, buy some more players in we'll get 10 million extra from, uh, from competing in the group stage of the Champions League for the January transfer window. We could perhaps sell on a couple of players as well to free up some extra funds. Something we'll definitely have to bear in mind when uh, it comes to the January window. But as you can see, we currently sit second in the group stage table on five points with Dortmund and Anderlecht yet to play. So very, very important couple of games. Dortmund, obviously, we drew against and Anderlecht we uh, drew against as well. So uh, a draw, I don't, it depends on how they get on 
against uh, Olympiacos. Because if Olympiacos can turn up the heat on uh, both of them, then despite the fact that they're bottom of the group, Olympiacos could really stand a chance of going through as well. So it is all to play for in the Champions League group. But right now, we are solidly on top of La Liga. Three points clear of anybody else. And even when, or if, Real Madrid win their game in hand against Villarreal, they'll only come five, uh, four points sorry, behind us in third. So uh, fortunately for us, we're having a very good season so far in the league and looks like we're going to hopefully continue to pull away. We're the only team remaining unbeaten in La Liga again, thanks to our win against Celta Vigo, and we'll hopefully continue that trend in the next episode on Monday. But that's going to bring today's video to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed, of course, as always, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There will be episode three of the Golden Oldies Challenge with MGH and Chani Sports coming out later on tonight, and obviously a Career Mode Road to Glory video after that, and a stream from Football Manager after that as well. There won't be an afternoon stream this afternoon, though. I have have too much work on unfortunately but for now that's all from me thank you very much for watching follow me on all the links in the description down below and i'll see you next time